Welcome to Personal Finance Cat, where I share my personal take on personal finance. Imagine a circular classroom surrounded by whiteboards and populated with movable chairs. Energized students are mesmerized by the tales of the Greek myths, the power of Zeus, the god of the sky, and stories of the great Hercules, his son, whose strength was legendary. Suddenly, a timeline is projected onto the middle of the floor. Children whisk away their chairs to stand in the present, ready to move backward and descend into the year 300 BC, a year in which they will encounter a new reality. They enter the metaverse of Greek culture. Cards buzz by them. Traders in marketplaces surround them, and high atop the hill, they see. With their own eyes, the temple of the gods and the people who worship them, they explore, they ask questions, they ponder, they learn. Doesn't that sound amazing? Hello, welcome to Personal Finance Cat, and today we're going to talk about how to create educational content in the metaverse. What I just read was the intro to an article published by the Brookings Institute titled "A Whole New World." Education meets the metaverse. If you are not familiar, the Brookings Institute is an American research group founded in 1916. It is a very prestigious institute with many highly qualified researchers who would produce research findings that are relevant for policymaking. Despite this wonderful-sounding intro, the key conclusion of this article is that educators and metaverse developers should work with each other. To avoid repeating the mistakes that happened with Web 2.0, where the market is flooded with "quote unquote" educational apps that are really not that educational at all. Based on the authors, we don't really know what education in the metaverse is going to be like yet, which provides us with the opportunity to get it right in the first place instead of waiting until it's too late. The lead author, Kathy Hirsch Pasek. Was also interviewed by Emily Chang on this topic. Let's take a listen. That Dr. Hirsch Pasek, given that you know, obviously we want everyone to have the benefit of these technologies, but they also need to be fairly and appropriately regulated. But regulation is up to lawmakers who don't necessarily understand the technology that they're trying to regulate. Well, I think we're going to have to help train them. I think there has to be some regulation to make this safe for parents and for children. And I think we have to deal with that upfront. In the same way, we have to make sure that there's quality, quality experiences in the metaverse. And a free for all that just says anything goes is dangerous for children. And as a parent, I would be scared too. I'm with you.、Hmm. The other key takeaway from this article is that there are a set of principles for learning, especially for children. And they should be incorporated into the metaverse educational curriculum. These principles include. Active, engaged, meaningful, socially interactive, iterative, and joyful, or what the authors would collectively call playful learning. The reason why I started with this article and the interview of the author is because I want to share with you these principles and other aspects that you should be mindful of if you are interested in exploring the metaverse for education, like I do. Education changed my life in a big way, so I always appreciate learning. Although I didn't like the means in which education was provided, at least the formal education, as they say, the teacher lecturing and students passively listening kind of style hasn't changed for hundreds or even thousands of years. Yes, there may have been some incremental improvements, but for the most part, that's how education is done. Besides the description I provided in the beginning. Mark Zuckerberg also produced many metaverse education-related videos. Just check out the website of Meta, formerly known as Facebook, and you will see plenty of content on this topic. For example, in the video where Mark announced the change of Facebook's name to Meta, they portrayed a kid who was able to learn about astrophysics by immersing herself in a scaled-down version of the solar system. And there are many wonderful things she is able to do. She could zoom in and out to see the nature of the atmosphere for each of the planets in the solar system. As you can imagine, 
there are so many applications that will be made possible in order to facilitate immersive learning in the fields of history, physics, biology, chemistry, medicine, to name just a few. It would not only make learning that much more fun, but also that much more impressionable. As Meta's slogan says, the metaverse may be virtual, but the impact will be real. That said, as I mentioned many times before, the metaverse is not going to be dropped as a store grant opening. It's going to be gradual. This applies to education in the metaverse as well. The completely virtual type of education may still be far away because frankly, the headsets as well as other associated technologies are still too expensive for mass adoption. However, based on an article by Harvard's Graduate School of Education titled, What Will Learning in the Metaverse Look Like? The immersive technologies used in metaverse education include not only virtual reality or VR, but also augmented reality, AR, and mixed reality, MR. According to the author, AR means using a smartphone or tablet to superimpose digital content onto the physical world. Think Snapchat filters or games like Pokemon Go. In MR, users interact with physical and virtual objects with a head-mounted, see-through display. Students might scan a physical space and embed an undersea environment where fish can swim around them. In VR, the physical environment is completely replaced with audio and visual stimuli in a virtual world. A headset like Oculus can allow a student to shrink down and explore the human body from the inside. In other words, we can already use AR and MR and incorporate the metaverse in education. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what has already been happening. When I was doing research for this episode, I found an app literally called the Metaverse app. Medium has a nice article about what this app is and how K-12 teachers have already been using it to, quote unquote, create magic in the classroom. In summary, the Metaverse app is a free augmented reality platform that is being used by thousands of teachers to build all kinds of interactive learning experiences for their classrooms. You can find the app at https colon double slash studio.gometa.io. You can also check out their YouTube channel called Metaverse AR Platform to learn how to use the app, which seems very straightforward based on the tutorials. No coding is required, and you just need to follow the steps and drag and drop different elements. You can use the app to create escape rooms, trivia, scavenger hunt, and so on. After you create such an quote-unquote experience with this app, you can generate a unique QR code for people to use this experience. As demonstrated by the videos of the real-life case studies in K-12 classrooms, kids are really adaptable, and they can figure out quickly what they are supposed to do with the app. During my research, I also came across another article in EdTech magazine titled, The Metaverse is Already Here, and K-12 Schools Are Using It for Education. According to this article, Educators and education-minded companies are already carving out a space in the metaverse and calling it the eduverse. Educators are using resources from Labster, which provides a platform for virtual labs and science stimulations, and the VR platforms Engage and Mozilla Hubs, which support virtual collaboration by simulating being in the same space. Teachers can also create virtual tours for students on Drift Space. In particular, this article mentioned a private school in Dallas called Dallas Hybrid Prep, which was founded during the pandemic and was one of the first to use a metaverse platform. Students at the school use their laptops or tablets to access the Stimuli Metaverse, a learning management system that builds asynchronous work within an enhanced virtual learning environment. Olga Romero, founding principal at Dallas Hybrid Prep, explains. Our fifth grade students join with their teachers while learning from home to collaborate and complete gaming style assignments using avatars and earning online currency for completing the assigned tasks. There you go, the wonderful capitalism at play, a system that encourages and rewards innovation to fill a market gap. Before I close out, I want to address a question that all of us may be wondering. 
Is this all hype and buzz? Or is this immersive learning actually more effective than traditional learning? Going back to the Harvard article, which states, a recent study found that using VR to take students on a virtual field trip to Greenland to learn about climate change produced higher interest, enjoyment, and retention than peers who simply watched a 2D video. So when is extended reality, or XR, which includes AR, MR, and VR, a good option for learning? A rule of thumb for teachers to follow is to use XR for experiences that otherwise would be too dangerous, impossible, counterproductive. For example, cutting down trees to learn about the effects of defrostation or prohibitively expensive, what the guide refers to by the acronym DICE. In summary, immersive learning in the metaverse may indeed be more effective, particularly under the DICE scenario. Hopefully, I convinced you that it is worthwhile to explore education in the metaverse. How do I go about creating educational content in the metaverse, you ask? Besides the metaverse app I already introduced, here's more good news. Meta, or formerly known as Facebook, has already committed a $150 million investment in immersive learning to train the next generation of creators. If you explore their website, you will find many free training resources, including an AR certification course. I'll link it in the show notes as well. There are certainly many other ways to learn. For example, YouTube, Coursera, Udemy, etc. all have so many tutorials and courses you can take. Since we're in the first inning, like they say, the sky is the limit, and you don't have to do it alone. Like the founder of Dallas Hybrid Prep, you can build a team to create something together. Spoiler alert, in my last episode for this metaverse season, I'm going to reveal several business ideas related to education in the metaverse. I really believe there are some huge opportunities in the education space, and metaverse can significantly facilitate it. As we know, traditional education isn't cutting it anymore. The changes in technology and the skills needed in the job market as a result are far outpacing the changes and updates in education. I think it is really up to the private sector to fill in the gap. Stay tuned if you want to hear more about some of the business ideas. As always, thanks so much for listening until the end. If you find this episode helpful, please leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, or leave a like or comment on my YouTube channel. I will really appreciate it. Thanks again. Until next time. 